Well, if you watch ups and downs, or even if you don't, you will know that WWE has kind of been stuck for a while. To the point that you would often load up a brand new episode of Raw and go, Oh, curse the skies, my DVR didn't record the latest episode until you realized they were just doing a copy and paste job because WWE was just hitting the repeat button. Well, if you watch ups and downs, or even if you don't, you will know that WWE, I am, of course, joking. <laughs> don't worry, you hate me, I hate me too, so do my parents, it's a round robin. Usually when we do talk about this though, we're just going off the field. I mean, there's always one guy that goes, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, you're just biased against this wrestling product, even though being biased towards or against any kind of wrestling makes you a little bit weird, but that's all about to change, the first sentence that is, because now I have proof. Because WWE actually is stuck on repeat. Why? Here's why. Now first off, shout out to Brandon Thurston over at WrestleNomics, who is just a king and a master of these kind of statistics. But yes, I'm gonna give you the headlines. Over the last year or so, 50% of matches on Raw have been rematches. That's the same with 54% on SmackDown and 31% on NXT. Just to calm the crazies down, going, ah, I can't believe you're talking about this. It was also 44% on Impact and only 10% on AEW. And I know now you're going, but AEW only ever do one match and they don't carry on the story. So there's pros and cons to everything. Would you stop shouting and calm down and just let me make my point? The issue right now though is with WWE and it's starting to show. And I'm sure this has been in progress long before 2021, but now it has caught up to us, mainly because we're not creating any new stars. And now BAM! It feels like we're watching the same thing every damn seven days. Let's look at SummerSlam 2002 for some more specific evidence as well. You will recall there were seven matches on that show. There was an eighth one, but that was the pre-show. And have a guess how many of them had happened in some form or in some guise over the previous 180 days. You already know the answer. It's every single one of them. And to be honest, if the story is good and has hooked you emotionally, who the hell cares? When you're talking about something like the hottest event of the summer, you do want to have some fresh matches that get you all warm and fuzzy and excited in your tum-tum. Of course, you want the big conclusions to certain feuds as well, but you need balance. It's what Star Wars taught us. It was one of the criticisms that was aimed at this year, WrestleMania 2, and people were like, well, we didn't really use that as a reset button. We kind of just blew through it and carried on doing the same thing. And the counterpoint to this is, well, real sports, they have leagues which sees teams take on each other all the time. That is a very great point. But you ever watch real sports? Within the framework is where the stories come from. Maybe one team is on a losing streak. Maybe one doesn't have their star striker. But even then, you can get two teams facing off and nobody tunes in because it doesn't have any narrative around it. And even before they've gone click, it sounds boring. So that ties into everything we're talking about here. If there's no impetus to watch, you're not going to watch. But the huge big shift when it comes to pro wrestling is that there's some guy or some girl or some somebody making it all up so you can do whatever you want. Take Cesaro versus Seth Rollins for another example. If you want to keep doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, hey, you ain't going to get many complaints from me because those two are so good together. But of course you have to justify it and once again, boring coming out of my mouth, you got to give me a story or you got to give me beats. Otherwise it's just guys scrapping and if I want that, I'll just go and tune into the boxing. And I'm also going to assume that most people watching this, if you are going to check out Raw or SmackDown, of course you want your wrestling, but you want promos, you want backstage skits, and yes, you want narrative. Because that's such a huge part of this crazy thing that we call entertainment. I mean, years and years ago, somebody decided, you know Ric Flair, who could be the greatest wrestler of all time, we should put him in a game of musical chairs. And you know what? That was one of the greatest moments of my life. In the 14 pay-per-views leading up to Hell in a Cell 2021 2, we had 89 matches, and once more, 58 of them were repeats. So that's where all this has come from. It's not like at the time we were going, oh, this is crap, I absolutely hate it. It has just snuck up on us because, of course, we are referring to the law of diminishing returns. So it just gets worse and worse and worse before smacking this in the face like a wet fish. And the real frustrating element is that you can amend this just by sitting down for five minutes and getting out a pen and a pad. For example, here's some stuff I'd like to see with, of course, the caveat that they have to have some kind of tail around them. Roman Reigns versus Riddle. Randy Orton versus Chad Gable. AJ Styles versus Mustafa Ali. Seth Rollins versus Mansoor. Liv Morgan versus Becky Lynch. I don't know that some people are away from the squared circle at the moment or they're on different brands, but I once again refer you to point 4.5. You make the whole damn thing up 
you can do whatever you want. I don't want to do the next part because it's going to make people implode as it always does, but it is something that makes AEW so fascinating. I mean, Kenny Omega, the world champion, had a world title match with Jungle Boy the other day, and for at least 8.2 seconds, I totally believe that the boy from the jungle may actually become the guy. And I wasn't overly familiar with him before AEW started, so I've grown to know who he is. And Cody Rhodes did the same thing with Darby Allen and the Young Bucks. Well, they pretty much take on everyone. And I suppose this has now devolved into a bet about making sure that we are building new stars. And of course, a great way to do that is pair them up with the old stars. And you don't even have to have them win. I mean, of course, that's going to help. But if you can come up with a good way to get from A to B after the fact, everyone will be like, oh, man, well, I better watch that person because they're absolutely fabu. Raw has certainly been better over the last couple of weeks, too. So I'm going to keep everything crossed that when fans are back in the arena, we finish that off. But I can't be the only one that when you saw it was Elias versus Jackson Riker again, you didn't go, well, how the hell are we justifying this? And also, who is the commander on the Starship Enterprise if he's down here? And it's not their fault, they're just doing what they were told to do, but it all could have been fixed if you were just giving me something to buy into. I mean, what is the story now? Elias doesn't like Jackson Riker, because he thinks he's a bit of a loon, so then they spent their time slapping each other with straps. Sorry, that doesn't sound like a wrestling narrative. It kind of sounds like porn. If you want a more traditional example too, go and look at The Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now, it's actually quite hard to get this information because everybody has a different idea about what did happen in the past. But I tried to discover how many times they fought on pay-per-view. And do you know what the number was? Five. I'm not including Rebellion because that was a stupid UK pay-per-view and I know because I was there. And while they would tangle on Raw or SmackDown, there is no way in 2021 that in a six year period, which is what this was, they only would have fought that many times. That's my hand. I mean, it only goes up to 24 when you include everything. And some of them are multi-man tags and a couple are even the flipping Raw Rumble. 24? I think I've seen Drew McIntyre Bobby Lashley fight 32 in 2021 alone. I'm not saying that everything in the future needs to be shaped by what happened in the past. I just mentioned Bobby and Drew. These two are terrific professional wrestlers. I mean, they are so great. And here I am saying, well, I don't need to see them wrestle again because I've seen it too much. And this applies to everything. There's nothing you can do in your life that eventually you don't get fed up with. And yes, that includes sex. If you don't believe me, go boink all evening. Go boink all week. When you get to your 47th boink, I guarantee your brain will be going, can't we go play Nintendo or something? I think that would be more fun. It can just get under your skin now again because the creativity is there. We just have to take a risk. And I have been the biggest critic of everything with Alexa Bliss and black goo and hypnotization, but at least we were giving something a go. I don't always have to be sports entertained, but you bet your ass I'm always impressed when you come up with something that I've never seen before. So just do it, pick two random people and sit down and craft a story. Even if it's crap, it's better than the same story that I've been seeing since I was a fetus popped out of my mother's womb. And that, my friends, is known as hyperbole and also a giant lie. Now, please do leave a comment below and let us know what you think about all of this. Maybe you love the repetitiveness. Maybe it makes you feel calm in your brain. And if so, good for you, you're living the dream. Then like the video, share the video and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com where you can read articles like this. Then go say hello on social media to us at the What Cultures account and watch more videos here on YouTube because YouTube is life. My name is Simon Culture. Thank you for joining me as always. And I'm going to keep an eye on this as I do all things. And then we'll revisit it in a year. And hopefully we can move WWE up the grading scale to an A star. If we get to A star wrestling, I'm going to be quaking with happiness in my boots.